What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to start a new track in Hack the Box. The track name is OWASP Top 10, where we're going through all of the top 10 web application vulnerabilities. We have covered many times web application vulnerabilities in the past videos, especially um, for labs produced by TryHackMe. And today we're going today we're going to take a look at this track and we're going to finish the first two tasks or the first two challenges. We have around um, 10 challenges, 11 challenges. So let's take a look at the first two today in this video. And in the upcoming videos, we're going to tackle down the rest of the challenges. So looking glass, the first one. As per the description, we have built the most secure networking tool in the market. Come and check it out. Okay. So if we spawn the machine, we will have the IP address along with the port that the application is running on. If we visit that on the uh, vulnerable machine here, we see the description, this page. This looking glass provides you with information relative to backbone routing and network efficiency, providing you with the same transparency that customers on our network receive directly. Trace route. Now, trace route, this trace route here, allows a user, as you know, guys, to follow a packet through the network to a specific destination. It shows a domain, IP address, and the round trip packet times as it traces the route to the destination. Now, all of you know, guys, Traceroute is a tool available in Windows and Linux. The tool is actually uh, used for mostly troubleshooting, network uh, connectivity problems. Now, here, ping, we have ping. Ping can be used to show whether or not a device with a valid internet address or domain name can return packets sent to it by a specified server. It means ping can be used to uh, find out whether the server or the IP address we are just pinging is online or not. And we have these tools available here at our disposal in the application ping and the trace route. We have to specify here the server, server one, for example, and the IP address of the server we want to trace through it or ping. So if we test, apparently now it is pinging the IP address. And in a while we should receive the results. As you can see, these are the results ping. And this is the output. So the output seems to be an output of a command performed on the command line or yeah, executed by the system. If we try trace route here and perform the test, hopefully it won't take that much time. In the meantime, guys, or in the interim, uh, we can actually envision how this gets executed in the background or by the system. So since the output here is a typical output. Oh, OK. So we got the output here for the trace route. Scrolling down, we see the number of hubs, 30 hubs, as you can see. And we have some masked information. Never mind, or nevertheless, this is the typical output you get when you execute trace route or ping on the command line. Now, what does that mean? It means that the web application is passing through our input to be executed by the system. Now, the question here is whether the input we pass through the web application gets filtered or gets, let me call it, handled. Uh, by various filters, by various um, whitelisting procedures or mechanisms to make sure that the input is safe. Or, or maybe the input is taken directly and executed by the system. So we have to find out. How to find out? We have to just to try. So the consequences if the out input is not filtered by the application are command injection. So if there is no filter that takes the input, um, strips the input from bad characters, compares the input to uh, known uh, bad uh, uh, or blacklist characters, etc., of the methods of filtering, there is a high chance we can perform command injection here. So let's first envision how this happens. So if we open a note 
file okay so system typically this is how it's it gets executed so we have a function system and inside the function we have double quotes okay pink dash c 139 59189170 make this bigger so that's normally most probably the function we don't have a and we don't have an access to the source code but we are assuming that there is some function here that executes this command and this command uh, actually, this is all passed to the web application. So if the input here, which is the IP address, is passed directly to the ping command and to the system function without any filtering, it means we can perform um, command injection. But how? Well, we have to trail this. So if the, in, in, in bash, the semicolon or, uh, or the double ampersand indicates uh, that we can execute two commands followed by each other so if we leave the ampersand here right and we put here like ls okay so what happens here the ping command gets executed and because of an ampersand here with ls we can execute ls at the same time so if we put ampersand here and ls I will choose pink. Let's see what's gonna happen. Right, so this is the output of the pink command and we have a file named index. So this file has actually appeared in the output due to the fact that we, uh, due to the fact that the command injection represented by the ls command has been successfully executed. So it means here we have um, command injection vulnerability. So our job here is to find the flag, the flag file. Since there, are, there is no flag file here, we have to do it other way. So try this ls, and then we try to list the contents of the root file system or the root directory. There is a bit of lag between every command because we um, execute the ping command. In the next attempt, we're gonna try to yeah, we're gonna try to execute the commands here without the IP address. See how this works. But it's not gonna work, I guess. Is the the output or the tool will complain about bad input? So we have to put the IP address. Okay, these are the contents, and as you can see, we have a flag here. If we try or if we attempt to read the flag, we can attempt to read the flag using. Again, we have the semicolon, cat, this is the file name. What to do here, we have to specify directory and the file name. Let's see. And this is the flag. So that's it, guys. That's it guys, this is the first challenge and it actually revolves around command injection vulnerabilities. Okay, going back here, we can take the flag and we can submit it to claim the, to claim the challenge as completed. So stop the instance, uh, we go back. Now on to sanitize, start the instance. So sanitize, can you escape the query context? And log in as an admin at my super secure login page. This is flat out SQL injection challenge. Because we have a query here. I have to skip the query, judging by the query, and log in as an admin. So if you have a form and you are required to log in as an admin, given that there is no brute force, there is no cross-site scripting, there is no CSRF, well, SQL injection, right? So let's take the IP and navigate to the page. This is the login form. Okay, try some default credentials. Admin, admin, sign in. 
must learn to think outside the box and we have this select from users where username equal admin and password equal admin so that's the SQL query executed by the application whenever you pass the parameters uh, namely the username and the password so we can note from the query let's take the query and copy it to the okay here we go so the parameters namely the username the value is admin and the password the value is admin are taken directly from the input without any filtering uh, without any parameterized query to protect against sql injection it means whatever input we pass to the login form it is taken directly by the sql statement or the select statement here and gets executed by the database so it's your chance to try sql injection here so maybe if you go back here and try some thing like admin column or one equal one let's take this as the username so if we pass this in the input as username that's how the query looks like the username equal admin or one equal one and then we have dash dash to comment the rest of the query what does that mean it means the application will come will take the parameters username and say username equal admin okay if admin doesn't exist then one equal one which evaluates to true all the time which means the username will be correct no matter what no matter no, no matter what we put here admin um john my name whatever it was whatever the username was it doesn't matter we have an or here that's logical operator indicates that one equal one equal true which means the username will always be true okay now imagine that if we don't put the double the dash dash here what's going to happen it's what's going to happen here it says the username will be true right and the password equal admin now if the password is incorrect the query will fail it's not gonna result in anything you want because here the operator is and 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 is a logical operator where both conditions have to be true so this first condition we handled the first condition it is true all the time what about this one we don't have any knowledge about the existing passwords on the application which means it can always evaluate to false so that's why we put dash dash here to comment the rest of the query which means that the and or the other factor or the other condition will be skipped by the web application which means we're gonna log in to the system let's try that the password anything you want could be the same and this is your flag it means you have logged in as an admin so that's it guys it's, that's the basic the, the plain the most plain basic principle of sql injection okay yeah. so we take the flag and we submit it and that's the first two challenges i hope you guys like them and later i will see you in the next video